Season 22 starts this Friday, November 20th at 7 p.m. at Central Standard Time. And in this video, we're going to give you an overview of what changed for the Necromancer, what it means for the class, and where to find all the updated build guides, as well as wrap up the video with a starter guide for the Necro. So a lot of information to pack in this video. Let's get into it. So what really changed in patch 2.6.10? Uh, for the necromancer well the big thing and really the only thing that changed for the necromancer is they added a pair of bracers which historically necros never had bracers which is pretty cool uh, unfortunately this means you know we can't wear nems full time anymore with the with the new set but uh i did add a 400 percent damage mod for your simulacrums uh bone spear which is quite a bit of damage and it brought the setup to be pretty ridiculous and the gameplay above we're going to play some Ice Spear uh, gameplay, which in my opinion is the top, you know, speed farm solo XP grind for the Necromancer. And in gameplay above, we're doing GR 110s in two and a half to three and a half minutes. Uh, Paragons removed. And also in the gameplay above, the and the other big thing that's changing in season 22 is there's a fourth cube slot. So we're going to be able to run Relina Shadow Hook in the build full-time in season 22 and so that's going to give us even more damage and the gameplay above i don't have the fourth cube slot so it is already nutty fast and it's going to get insanely faster now of course the fourth cube slot isn't just good for bone spear necromancer it's good for basically every build we've ever made and originally i heard the fourth cube slot was being added i i was hoping they would add up you know even more build possibilities i was really excited about the change but after a significant amount of testing on PTR, it really kind of turns out that the fourth cube slot for the Necromancer in general really just means add a shadow hook to your build. It, it seemed to be true for, you know, 95% of the, the, my builds in particular. Now, to find these build guides, at least the updated guides for me, the best practice is to join my Discord server. The Discord link, invite link, is in the video description below. You can always stop by my stream and just type exclamation point discord as well. And we have an entire section called hashtag necro guides. And we keep this up to date every season uh, of what I think is still relevant. What I think that is still really fun and really powerful. There are of course tons of other builds on Diablo fans. But if you guys are looking for an updated compendium of all the builds that we've made on this channel that I still feel are real relevant. This is the go-to place, and they are arranged by in the order at which I think they're the most powerful. Now, in Season 22, uh, the starter set is the Masquerade of Carnival, which is the Bone Spear set for the Necromancer. So, our Hadra's Gift this season is the Bone Spear set. And again, this is the most powerful Necromancer set, period. It is insanely good, especially... Uh, for that solo GR experience factor. It's at least five GRs ahead, if not more, uh, of the, the Blood Lancer, which I think is maybe the runner-up, or Mages. Um, Mages can do the same level, but it's a lot more squishy. This is super tanky, super consistent. I think a lot of you guys are going to like it if you felt Necro was very squishy in the past. So with that in mind, our directive as soon as we start the season is... You know, since Masquerade is the starter set, is to rush Ice Spear as fast as we possibly can. That is our main objective. So just like every season, guys, we're going to tell you what we always tell you, and some of you still, unfortunately, forget, is to save your challenge drift for this week, right? Don't do your challenge drift until the season starts. Once the season starts, make your seasonal character, go to your game settings, switch to uh, challenge rift, save and close, Go do that thing. Enjoy the big brain uh, no cube whirlwind build, which is the starter for NA this season for some reason. After you've completed it, switch back to adventure mode. Get back on your level one seasonal character. Start that game up and you'll have a reward in the bottom left, which is your challenge rift cash. Now, we are rushing bone spear, like I said, but there's really nothing you can roll at level one that really benefits a bone spear setup. And as a lot of you guys know, you know, a couple seasons ago, maybe three seasons ago, they increased the base damage of Corpse Explosion. So I'm going to recommend that you roll gloves and try to get the Grasp of Essence at level one. Because again, you'll have about 500 blood charge at your disposal because of the Challenger of Cash. 
So we spent all our shards. We got one pair of grass of essence. Season's not brick. Uh, now a lot of you guys might get super unlucky and not get the pair of grass of essence. And a lot of you guys might get super lucky and get a uh, grass of essence right away. If you get the grass of essence and you still have some blood shards left, I'm going to go ahead and recommend that you roll rings. Try to get the circle of Naluge evil, which is the mage ring. Because as a lot of you guys know, you know, the, the mage setup is still going to be really powerful. Rat runs is still going to be... Uh, a really dominating presence in the XP meta if you guys are interested in groups. So getting your hands on that ring as fast as you can is the play. Also from the Challenge of Cash, you should have enough cash to upgrade your Blacksmith, your Mystic, and your Jeweler. Once you've upgraded them, what you're going to want to do is you have just enough mats to upgrade one two-hand scythe. So you're going to go over the Blacksmith and you're going to craft a level 70 two-hand scythe you're going to need to pick up the Herodric cube from the Ruins of Seshron. Come back, open the cube, go to Recipe 3, fill it in. Before you upgrade this two-hand scythe, just make sure it's very unlikely, but that you didn't get level reduction on the secondary. If you got some crazy good level reduction on the secondary, make sure you keep that two-hand scythe. But if you didn't, go ahead and upgrade it. Now, again... There are four really good two-hand slice for the Necromancer. There's really no option here that you can get that you're going to be upset about. Everything you can get is going to help you while leveling. Now, naturally, if you can get Maltorius' Petrified Spike, you're pretty set for when you hit max level. That'll be one item you don't really have to chase down. If you get really in a Shadow Hook, congratulations. It's going to be good across all the builds in the game and will definitely help you since you hopefully got a pair of Grass of Essence right away. If you get Nair's Black Death, Obviously, you can make that work and you just run up your build with a bunch of poison abilities and get that damage mod. Now, if you do get the blood type blade, I would highly recommend uh, if you find yourself with some a handful of blood shards while you level around level 24 or so, you can get your hands on an iron rose, which is a necromancer offhand that lets you get free casts of Nova. So you can just sit there and spam Nova. Now, once you upgrade your weapon, your fate is sealed. Godly ancient. <laughs> and unless you roll level reduction on the secondary i'm going to highly recommend that you cube that weapon right away and that'll give you that damage mod while leveling which is super duper important and then the last of your materials as always you want to make sure you craft a two-hand axe level 70 and what you're looking for here on the secondary as always is a cc effect like this one rolled right here now this one's actually pretty good so you just go over to the mystic put this bad guy in there and then try to roll level reduction to the maximum you can possibly go you're only gonna have so many opportunities to roll this thing so be wary of that you're not gonna have just infinite mats to spend here if you get an axe that didn't roll a cc effect you might want to craft a new axe you're ready to kind of monitor your crafting materials it's not the end all be all if you don't get lucky and get level reduction you should at some point be able to get it like this one rolled a 13 um, that kind of sucks, but so just a couple more real rolls here. We got 21, which is which is really not bad. One thing you might want to do here too, after you've crafted the level reduction, you might want to go in here and transmogrify the item for yeah, 500 gold. And that just ensures when you go to the blacksmith and hit salvage all, that weapon's not going to be a part of that pool. So you want to sit on that level until you've reached the level requirement. You know, the, the level 70 minus the level reduction you got, and you're going to put it on and you're going to fly to the end of a level 70. But that's the same as you guys have seen every season, right? So let's fast forward. We're level 70. We've got hopefully one of the weapons you need already in the cube. What's our goal? What are we focusing on here, right? This season's a little bit more unique for the Necro in the sense that obviously a, a, a gate for us in the past has always been Crispin Sentence, right? Crispin Sentence, there's really no way to focus farm a Crispin Sentence. So it's really a matter of luck and you can be Super lucky and get it within your first 100 Paragon, or you can be really unlucky and not see it until 800, 900 Paragon. Um, and this is almost twofold, right? Because we have to get a Haunted Visions. And there's also no way to focus farm Haunted Visions. And Haunted Visions is by far and away, in this particular build, way more important than even Crispin Sentence. Because without that permanent uptime of the Simulacrums, your damage is going to be big time suffering. So let's fast forward, you know, we're going to get our Hadrian's Gift, we're gonna get your six piece. Then I'm gonna recommend that you upgrade one hand size until you get your hands on a side of the cycle, a Tragul's Crota Fang, or a Jesseth set. There's really no bad one hand scythe you can get, besides, of course, Funerary Pick. And then once you have three usable weapons, right? Two in the cube, 
one on your person, I'm going to recommend you spend all of your upgrades on amulets. You got to get the Haunted Vision as fast as you can. You're going to get throttled by how quickly you can find the Haunted Visions, right? And you can make Tragul's Crota Fang work. You can make Jess's set work. You can make Nair's Black Death work. You can make a great deal of weapons in this particular setup work. So as long as you get three damage mods, start focusing on necklaces immediately. You know, with, with Ice Spear, you don't run a generator, um, ideally, because it's kind of a waste of a slot. Early season, you can, of course, throw on a generator, or you can even run Land of the Dead for those times you do run out of Essence. And, you know, if you get Jessus set, you're going to command Skeletons, so you're going to want something to get your Essence back, so either Land of the Dead or, like, Bone Spikes or something like that, especially for running uh, Shadow Hook in the cube. Your first focus of Blood Charge is definitely going to be to get a pair of Marrow Guards. And I'm actually going to suggest that even if they roll poorly, put them on. Because chances are, you know, you, you want Captain Crimson set, you want a Ring of Royal Grander, and you're going to have to run some bounties to get that Rorg. So if you don't cube the Marrow Guards, you can actually cube the Steward's Greaves, and then those will be ready to go. Because you won't have used up your armor slot for the Marrow Guards. You know, for belt slots early on, you can run a Witching Hour, you can run a Vigilant Belt, you can run a Dainty's binding which is actually really good eventually you're going to want to get your hands on captain crimson's but you know that can take some time you don't want to you don't want to spend too much of your early season farming bounties because that's not very efficient once you sort of have your entire masquerade set and you know maybe at this point you've gotten yourself a rorg you've got the weapons that you need i would honestly probably start spamming blood shards on rings try to get your christmas sentence uh and using every single bit of upgrade you can get towards necklaces. So make sure to keep your eye out for, you know, yellow amulets, yellow level 70 amulets, because you want to kind of save those mats early on and be upgrading them through the cube to try to get that haunted visions. You're also trying to get a scorched necklace. That would be really, really good as well. The flavor of time would be super helpful early season as well. There's really a lot of things that can work for each slot. Obviously look out for a convention of elements. It's really quite versatile what you can do with bone spear and the necromancer weapons and necromancer jewelry. But again, the big problem here is going to be getting your hands on Haunted Visions and a Christmas sentence. Because again, you're going to be rushing Ice Spear as fast as you possibly can. Of course, this, this guide will be in the video description below. I would highly recommend you watch the video guide that we made last season. It is the same build, the same setup. It is insanely fast in the upcoming season. And again, do check out our Discord server. All the Necro guides you could possibly want are on this server and the hashtag necro guide section but that's really all there is to it hopefully this somewhat helped you strategize how you're going to plan out uh your season 22 character and kickstart your way into running ice spear and speed grs uh just insanely fast higher than we've ever been able to do as a necro it's really a great season uh to be a necro solo player or even a group player we are in most of the metas currently but regardless of your skill level you're gonna be able to jump into bone spear especially ice spear very consistent very easy very very strong and ooh, 115s three minutes that's insane xp boys we'll see you in there if you guys like the content as always like subscribe you know the subscriptions help out a lot guys if you want to support the youtube channel you can obviously join the youtube channel that they've got basically a subscription a twitch like subscription system now so if you guys want to support the stream, there's still the Patreon. You can go over to lordfluffy.com, which is basically just a website that we have with a compendium of all our stuff. We, of course, have merchandise if you guys would like to purchase any of that. Every little thing you guys do goes a long way, I promise. But we appreciate you guys. As always, like, subscribe, come over to Twitch, ask your questions. We love you guys. Peace out.